it's a great aerobatic trainer because it can do literally anything you throw at it. All right guys, I have the laser plugged in on a Volta 2 cell 450 milliamp hour battery pack. Now, something that completely uh, went past my mind uh, on the intro, I actually already recorded a maiden flight video of this, but um, silly thing, I used a really bad glue when gluing these fuselage spars for the first time. And I used thin CA, I mean, I used super thin CA, it called for thin CA. And I thought it was going to be the exact same, but the bond was absolutely horrible on something like this. And during flight, some of these spars came loose. Sorry, not the spars. Some of these supports came loose. And what happened on video is um, the tail started wagging because every time you do a roll or a loop or anything that required a lot of stress on the elevator, it would twist the fuselage. So... Um, Note to self, never use that glue again, but um, for a build like this, I mean, I've used super thin, thin for just slight repairs, but not for an entire build, so. The thing should be going good now. So, I don't have any rates on anything other than my elevator because the elevator servo, it will give you 90 degree deflection unless you change it. And you can see here, it's just so slow. It's so enjoyable to fly. You can see there's a slight breeze and it's already getting kicked around a little bit. But I think that's my favorite time to fly something like this because It's just awesome. Just flying it is ridiculous. I've never flown an airframe this capable. Oops. <laughs> And it will take a bit of a beating, definitely not as much as something like a standard Twisted Hobbies model would, the standard 32 inch, because this one is super light. That was a piece of grass, not a piece of the plane. Um, but it does take a beating. The foam they use on all of the Twisted Hobbies models is just so durable. That's what they're known for, their performance and their durability. And this one really goes to show it's a blend of the both. And it's just such a beautiful model. I cannot recommend this thing more. Just going for a little rolling circle. I need to practice these more. Other way? I suck it the other way. Yeah. And then you know you got your standard hovers, it can obviously do it. But you see that wind, how it's already being pushed around? So I'm just saying if you have, if you live in a very windy area and you don't have anywhere indoor to fly, this might not be the best choice for you. Like if you live near the beach or something and you fly near the beach. But it's just such an excellent model. I, I honestly do love it so much. It's one of my, I think it is my favorite thing to fly right now. It's a great aerobatic trainer. 
because it can do literally anything you throw at it. And normally where I'm at, it's not that windy, so, uh, at least in the morning, so. And just wiggle the servos around. It's just such an excellent model. I will, um, I will show the original flight that I did with the messed up fuselage, just so you can see like my first thoughts on it. Just the elevator authority is absolutely insane. It's like, it just really defies physics, this one, man. And because it's so slow, you can fly in super enclosed spaces. Like, I'm not talking like a gym, I'm talking like the inside of your garage. Like, it, you, if you can hover that well, it can happen. Because it's just so incredibly slow. <laughs> All right, I think do a little bit more and then I'll give the little landing. Alright, so that was my flight on the Hacker Model Laser 230 and I just can't praise this model more. It's such a joy to build, it's such a joy to fly, it's, it's just honestly I think the perfect profile plane airframe and uh, I think the price on this thing, I think it's around $90 for the kit, if my memory serves me what, right? And with the electronics, it's going to be around 230 out of the door. It's like they tried to match the model, Laser 230. That wasn't funny. But, um, yeah, so, like I said, I will put the um, first flight at the end of this video, which will be in a minute, so... Yeah, um, thanks for tuning to John's RC, and if you're new to this channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye guys, I'll see you in the next one. Alright guys, I have the Laser 230 plugged in on the Crack 2 cell 450 milliamp hour battery pack. You can see here, I kind of just have it mounted uh, on the very end of the Velcro, so let's go and give it a flight. I was hoping to fly it a bit earlier. Um, there's a little breeze now, but you know. Shouldn't matter too much. And we're up. Needs a bit of elevator trim.
Oh, 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 oh. oh man This is, this is amazing. Oh, I absolutely love it. It feels so nimble in the air, it's so light. Oh man. It feels beautiful. I can feel the beautiful. <laughs> this, it feels like a work of art. Oh man. I think my elevator can be toned down a bit. But I think right now it's great. It just stays in place. Sorry, I'm not talking much, it just it feels so good. Look at that. Do a little hover circle.
and it's, it's such a beautiful day to fly this thing too. Yeah, this might be my favorite thing ever. <laughs> and you know, this thing does have that plastic landing gear, but you know, what's the fun in that? All right. So that was my maiden flight on the Hacker Model Laser 230 and this thing is absolutely amazing. This probably might be my favorite airframe I've ever flown yet. It's so nimble in the air, it's so light, it flies absolutely outstanding. Uh, this is Hacker's uh, latest airframe and I think um, I'm just so content with this model. It feels so great in the air. and. Yeah, so now let's go back to the table and let's talk a bit more about the model. Hey guys, John here and welcome back to John's RC. And this is the Twisted Hobbies Hacker Laser 230. Now this is um, a really, really new release from Hacker Models and it's just such an awesome model. Now, I have had this for around a month now. I've been playing around with it and I think it's, uh, finally time to do a video on it just a little review So I'm going to be doing a little table talk first about this laser 230 and then we'll get to the skies so This comes as a kit as all twisted hobbies planes do but um, This is a super light model meaning unlike a standard model that has a bit thicker foam This one has super super thin foam so you can see that Sorry, that was a little jittery you can see how the foam is super, super thin, and this is going to be mainly for indoor flying or ultra calm winds or no wind uh, outdoors. So building this, there's a little bit of extra time that you have to spend um, putting it together carefully uh, as opposed to like a regular standard model, but it's really, really worth it and Hacker made it super simple to build this thing. I'm just really dumb. so. You start off by putting the wings on to the fuselage. So the fuselage comes in one, two, three, three different parts. You have the top half, the middle, and you have the bottom part of the fuselage. So you first connect the two wing halves to the bottom, or sorry, the middle of the fuselage, and then you align everything with carbon. So you can see here, the entire uh, airframe is lined to the brim with carbon and this is because the airframe is just so thin so without the carbon it's not going to um, hold up very well it's just gonna flop around so you can see here uh, it's not pushed in anyway I need more glue on this apparently but you can see here you have a bunch of spars that go through the wing and then there's one main spar or two main spars sorry that go from the uh, top of the wing where the leading edge sits that goes through the entire right wing and left wing and the fuselage and then you need to line the fuselage with carbon so you have these two strips that you can see here and you're gonna have to cut them where they meet at the wing spar so they don't uh, interfere with each other and then that's really all you have to do for now with the fuselage i believe my my memory serves me right and then we move on to the tail here and this is where i struggle the most because of probably the silliest thing that could have happened um the fuselage i mean the elevator as you can see here it's not a, it's not a vertical or a horizontal stabilizer with an elevator. The entire stabilizer serves as the elevator. So 
what needs to be done is you can see there's one main horizontal stabilizer spar that goes through the fuselage and it connects both of the halves but there's also these two little pieces here and this little plastic piece there's three little plastic pieces that will serve as a kind of separator so the uh horizontal stabilizer can move freely without clashing with the foam part of the fuselage. And you can see it looks super ugly here. I wonder why this happened. I lost one of these uh, pieces that goes on the spar and that completely ruins my day because it stopped my build for around, I wanna say two and a half weeks, trying to get a new piece of this um, I don't know the right word for it. I'm just gonna call it a separator. But um, luckily, one of my friends came to the rescue and was able to 3D print a new piece. And it's kind of hard to tell here. Oh, well, one of them looks <laughs> molten, but this one on the here on the uh, stabilizer looks really nice. And that's actually 3D printed by one of my good friends, and it works like a charm it fit absolutely perfectly it's a little bit thicker but it served its purpose and it's saved the builds honestly because i don't know how how else i would get a piece like that so yeah you have the horizontal um stabilizer that just fits loose for now as you continue on to build the plane uh, the next part is the joining of the two other um, the two other fuselage halves. So you have these two carbon pieces, if I can find them. There's one here and one here, and they go throughout the bottom and the top, and that will kind of join the two pieces of the fuselage so they can st stick together. And then you need to uh, glue on the the carbon, but also glue just the rest of the f uh, the halves to the fuselage. And clearly, I didn't do a good job doing that because there was a bit of a gap, but that's okay. So now that you have the two halves connected, uh, you need to put on. I think this is the most fun part of the build. These little um, carbon supports and they come, sorry, my aileron servo is being annoying. Um, they come in just really long uh, lengths and you need to cut them down to size. So I start off right here and then you can see there's a little slot that indicates where the piece goes. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little slot and you just cut it and then you cut it, and then you cut it, and then you cut it, and then you cut it. And then you do the same thing for the other side. And then if you do it right, it should look like a perfectly symmetrical fit. And then you have the two here, just to support the nose. So the next part, I don't know why my aileron servo is doing that. The next part of the build is the landing gear, I believe, and to do that, there's just these two um, carbon pieces to identify them. They're the thickest one out of the box and also, well, they're just the thickest one. And the wheels here, wheels, are just what looks to be plastic. I'm not sure what it's, what plastic it's made out of, but it's just plastic that fits onto the carbon and it's glued on top of the wheel pants. And, um, it doesn't really serve as wheels. I'm not sure you can take off from these because there's just going to be a lot of friction on it. Um, for a plane like this, you really just need to throw it and catch it in a hover. Or, I mean, you can land it and just plop it down, but that's no fun. <laughs> so, yeah. So you got the landing gear installed. I'm probably forgetting one of the steps. Uh, you need the vertical stabilizer, which I somehow messed up. Um, the vertical stabilizer just attaches to the fuselage, super simple stuff, um, but somehow, I don't know how, there's a gap in between the fuselage and the stab. It doesn't really affect flight, but I don't know, I'm very imprecise apparently. 
So you get to that installed and you kind of just leave it hanging for a bit while you get the rest of the build. I think now is the time to install the electronics. Actually, sorry, before that, you need um, all the wing supports. So you have this one that goes, you have this little support and it goes on top of the wing, um, it's on the bottom of the wing, and then you have these four carbon pieces that will go across where the leading edge spar is all the way to the bottom of the fuselage and there's this little plastic piece that goes on each side so you can stick the carbon through and this is on both sides and then you have this also another support and that is also just carbon I messed up on this part and I need to fix this eventually because it does change a little bit. Um, you can see here I didn't measure these out right and I put these on at the very end of the build and I realized I didn't have the right size carbon anymore after cutting all of it. So you can see here it's actually not reaching all the way where it should but um, I have some that do but some that don't. So you can see here. Um, it doesn't reach all the way to the end of the slot. So eventually I'm going to have to buy just carbon strips off of whatever and debond these and then stick on the right size. So it just fits a bit nicer, but it doesn't really change much other than you can see these wing tips are a little droopy, but whatever. So now you install your electronics, um, you have, three servos you have the one for your horizontal stab your rudder and then you have one for your aileron these are all six gram servos they're pretty tiny and um, I mean you don't need much to power a plane this thin but um, you can see here they're kind of just stuck into these pre-cut slots that uh, were already out of the box but you do have to cut a little bit of foam to get them to fit flush with your electronics. I got the ones that were meant for this package. Uh, there's, they have these power combos where you can get the uh, electronics that were meant for whatever size model that you're building. But I still needed to cut a little bit of foam to have it fit flush. So the way these are linked to the control surfaces, you can see here, you have these really long... Um, control horns that stick directly onto the stabilizer so you can see here there's one for the rudder there's only one hole for the uh, linkage and then you can see here you have more for the aileron and yeah that just goes both ways and for the elevator because this is a full stab elevator um, if you look at the ugly part of the stab there's actually a piece um, that acts as the control horn and that will act as your um, elevator because you can see here it's glued directly onto the spar but the spar isn't glued to anything else but this so when you move it it moves what's connected to the stab so it's pretty smart and it works great the aileron is a single servo aileron and it's just connected by i forgot what this is called um but you can see here it's like a push pull mechanism and you get a really good amount of throw on it so yeah um for the electronics like i said six gram servos all around these are all from twisted hobbies the uh motor here i forgot the size sorry it's a 2203 1800 kv brushless outrunner motor that's on an apc 4x1 sf 3d prop that's a tongue twister but um it's the apc prop and it works great i'll have this on all of my profile planes and it's my favorite prop to use on the esc side it's a crack 15 amp esc and uh, you can see it's super tiny and it just fits onto the uh, bottom of the fuselage here and for the battery i'm using a volta two cell 450 milliamp hour battery pack 
and um, I also have another battery for this that's Twisted Hobbies on brand Crack. Uh, it's the Crack 2 cell 450. It just needs any 2 cell 450 size battery. And yeah, for my receiver, I went with ELRS. Uh, I went with the Radio Master um, ER4 ELRS 4 channel receiver. Um, I use this because it's the lightest receiver I know of and it's also incredibly tiny. So just to get um, the lightest weight possible. Flying weight is going to be around 160 to 180 something grams. I got this to sit at 163 grams, but keep in mind it's probably heavier because I had to keep ungluing and re-gluing the stab, the elevator because I could not get it to fit flush. But that's my fault. Like I said, I'm like impaired when it comes to building foam plants. So, um, I actually think that's it. Uh, just real quick um specs i forgot to mention the wingspan and everything it's a 32 inch wingspan and a 35 inch length and i think that's it i think that's probably one of my longest intros because uh this plane was fully built and i had to explain everything so i apologize for that uh, if you're still watching this thank you but um now we can finally get to the flight <laughs> 